What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. Today we're going to be talking about the results of the Sandy Ego Regionals, uh, that is an Ego that has been dropped out on a beach, uh, San Diego. But yeah, um, this was a really cool tournament. I didn't watch any of Swiss, but I did watch the majority of the top cut matches. Uh, and I think that's like the most important thing to watch. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm obviously on the results page here. So we're going to talk about the results of this tournament, uh, the implications of what we've seen in like top cut and how I think the metagame is going to proceed from here on out. And we'll we'll take a, like an in-depth look at a couple of teams. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content and answer my comment question of the day, which is what Pokemon do you think will win the next regionals or what sort of archetype? Anyways, <clears throat> let's get into it. So obviously the winner was uh, Chisok Lee who ended up running a Garganical, uh, or here, let me just open it up, uh, a Garganical, Baxcalibur, Mimikyu, Paldean, Tauros, Water, Meowth, and Golden Go lead. And I actually straight up called it. I said, look, I think that uh, Tauros Water is going to end up winning or doing extremely well in the uh, San Diego Regional. Uh, and, and I got it right. If you want to watch like my breakdown about why Tauros Water is good, uh, check it out. It's like three videos ago, but yeah. So the way that uh, Jisok Lee actually used it uh, was as a safety goggles Pokemon in a more offensive set with close combat, wave crash, aqua jet, and protect. Now, the reason this is like a really good Pokemon is because it's like really solid into stuff like Don Dozo and other generally good physical attackers. Um, like, you know, Palafin's like been picking up a little bit. Rain teams in general, it does well into stuff like Hariyama. Uh, and yeah, also it naturally outspeeds a lot of really strong Pokemon in the metagame. It outspeeds Golden Go and resists uh, Make It Rain. Uh, and it also outspeeds Hydreigon, which is one of the best Pokemon in the format, which we can see is on a good number of top cut teams. Also that Fighting Stab with Close Combat will be able to one shot uh, pretty much every non Terra Dark King Gambit. So yeah. Uh, Jisok's team was actually really cool. If we just take a look at the move sets, Garganical is running a Purifying Salt Terra Poison. I don't know what the Terra Poison was for, to be honest. I think the Terra Poison was an adaptation because if we actually take a look, there's been an uptick in usage for stuff like Glamora, uh, which will sometimes run Toxic plus, uh, plus Corrosion, as well as uh, we do see some Salazzle here and there. Where is the Salazzle? I don't know if there was one in Top Cut. Um, there had to be one in Top Cut. I'm pretty sure I saw it. Huh, maybe I'm wrong, but no, uh, Salazzle is a Pokemon. Oh, here it is. So Salazzle is a Pokemon that runs Corrosion as well. Uh, and the reason this is picking up in usage is because it's able to go for like Toxic into Don Dozo. This one obviously isn't running it. It's running Endeavor. Uh, but like, yeah, that's like an option that these guys have. Usually it's like Glamora though. Glamora is the one that you tend to see run uh, Corrosion. However, I don't think we actually saw any in Top Cut that actually did. They're mostly Toxic Debris like uh, Emilio Forbes team here. Uh, that ended up running Choice Specs Toxic Debris. But also, you know, uh, being able to be immune to poison in general is very nice. So like uh, it, like Toxic Spikes is a thing that you actually have to deal with in this metagame, which is really cool because some Meowth run it, uh, Toxic Debris is a thing. And being able to turn into a poison type and be able to absorb those spikes uh, by switching in on them and also being immune to it is just a really nice tool for Garganical. So I'd imagine that's why it got ran. Uh, but yeah. Uh, other things in the team, we see Mimikyu with a Life Orb, uh, Play Rough, Shadow Claw, Shadow Sneak, and Protect. That's really interesting. Offensive Mimikyu with like no Trick Room is like really crazy. No Will-O-Wisp is also really cool. I, I I don't know what like the thought process behind this was, but obviously it worked out. Um, and yeah, we see Focus Sesh Masquerada, just like a standard set, and uh, a Choice Specs Golden Go with Make It Rain, Shadow Ball, Power Gem, and Focus Blast. This team was crazy. I actually highly recommend you guys check out the footage of the finals match, because uh, Jisok Lee versus Chuppa Cross was like a really cool, uh, it was it was a really cool like display of why this team was uh, working. There's a lot of Don Dozo representation uh, throughout the entirety of the tournament, and only a few in top cut, uh, but like, this is like a completely anti-meta team that just came out of nowhere and just annihilated the competition. But we do see a good amount of, um, what's it called? We do see, like, it show up, like, multiple times in Top Cut. Because, you know, Giovanni, uh, oh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, dude. I'm sorry, I don't want to even try. Uh, but yeah, uh, Polar Bear, I know you as that, uh, ran, like, pretty much the exact same team. Uh, we see, you know, Miascarada, Offensive Mimikyu, literally the same team. Uh, and I believe there is another Bax Caliber in here, yeah. Uh, Marco Martinez run this, uh, ran like a similar team, except there's a Salazzle on it instead of a Mimikyu and a uh, Amoongus instead of a Miascarada. Uh, but yeah, you can see this like Baxcalibur core sort of taking place. Baxcalibur plus 
uh, Paldea and Tauros is just like a really nice combination of Pokemon for a number of reasons. Uh, Baxcalibur is also like obviously very weak to uh, Hydreigon because it outspeeds it and can one shot it and Paldea and Tauros can just uh, annihilate that thing outright. Uh, but also, uh, Baxcalibur is able to go for stuff like Swords Dance setup with that extra bulk after Intimidate and go for like Ice Shards. This one isn't running it, but we did see it. Oh wait, no, there it is. Uh, it is running it. Um, and we did see it like play a huge part in the, in like its success. I think that like, what is it called? Baxcalibur like has to run Terra Water Swords Dance, or not Swords Dance, but like Icicle Shard to get the max value out of it. Um, I've run like Terra Dragon for the extra damage, but honestly being able to not get one shot by dragon moves feels like a really good call but yeah chup across this team um is also very cool it's i'm very familiar with the way that this sort of team would pilot because i've been running um a similar team myself with uh you know revival blessing palm Op plus don dozo but uh an adaptation that happened recently with don dozo is a lot of them started running the stretchy tatsugiri variant which will actually give you a speed boost when you use order up instead of an attack or defense boost and you might be wondering why would you run speed boosting uh tatsugiri on a don dozo team well the general reason is because don dozo can be checked by stuff like meow Skirata, um or kilowattro which will naturally outspeed it as well as like talonflame talonflame is another answer for it since they can like outspeed and will-o-wisp you but if you're running a speed boosting order upset you'll be able to order up into like another pokemon and then you outspeed meowscaradas and you can deal with them uh with a variety of moves like if you want to go for another order up it probably won't one shot meowscarada uh but if they've taken any like chip damage like order up into like sucker punch will like usually do the trick or the other way around obviously but another cool thing is that it's actually running a Soak set. So like Soak plus uh, Choice Band Meowscarada is really cool because Choice Scarf Tatsugiri will be able to go first, change the type of the target to water, uh, and the Meowscarada just one shots it. Another thing that we see is um, there's a lot of Intimidate now. So Intimidate usually is like just really good in VGC, but this generation, due to the introduction of stuff like Defiant uh, King Gambit, Defiant Annihilate, uh, clear amulet Pokemon and just like a lot of really solid answers to intimidate Pokemon it fell off hard like it really really fell off and a lot of people were saying like hey if it's going to come back at any point in time it's going to be the first regional because we are playing open team sheet so open team sheet means that you can tell where the clear amulets are you can tell what Pokemon have defiant uh or not like maybe they'll be running like a I think like uh, Vital Spirit and Annihilate is a thing that's been picking up recently. So yeah, you sort of understand like the thought process there. And it did show up in, in like absolutely crazy amounts because uh, we see Intimidate on this Tauros. We see Intimidate on the Arcanine, Intimidate Salamence. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. I like that it came back because I'm a big Intimidate fan uh, and I was getting really annoyed with the lack of it. Uh, but this could also lead to like an uptick in, you know, bringing Defiant Pokemon back. Like maybe like Vital Spirit Annihilate was a, a mistake on a lot of people's uh, team builder, and now they're going to go back to uh, Defiant because it's going to be a lot easier to pilot. But yeah, uh, these teams were super cool. Obviously, like this is just like a hyper offense team plus Don Dozo uh, to clean up, and the Revival Blessing Palmot's a really nice tech. Um, I forgot, what was the Palmot ability? Natural Cure. Yeah, Natural Cure is really cool uh, because what it allows it to do is actually switch in on stuff like Spore or Will-O-Wisp, and then it can get out and, and heal itself uh, of that status. I tend to like Volt Absorb personally because it lets me switch in on electric moves for the Don Dozo in case I'm facing like a Kilowatt or Rotom, but I can understand the thought process with Natural Cure. Obviously it paid off here. But yeah, uh, the rest of the top cut teams, uh, Judy here is actually running uh, a Palafin, which shout out to Atrix MJ, friend of the channel, artist, made the thumbnail for this video, uh, was something that he called being extremely important in this, uh, in this tournament. And the main reason it's important is because it, like it has like one of the best priority moves in the game jet punch is 60 base power aqua jet uh which is a good like that's the best way to think about it uh another way to think about it is it's like technician aqua jet it's the same power as like a scissor bullet punch but yeah this pokemon in rain is ridiculous palafin hero is like just really really strong it has the stats of a legendary pokemon yeah, so like you start off like these bad stats and then you have the Palafin Hero, which has 160 attack and like insane bulk and speed. It's basically a legendary Pokemon. Uh, and that bulk allows it to do a couple of things. It lets it like go for these multiple uh, jet punches and pick up KOs if it if it isn't able to do it on the first go. 
uh, but also it's going to allow it to eat hits from like Don Dozo or like Swords Dance to Garchomps and go for those hazes, allowing it to reset those things. So like that's another extremely good use for it is for checking Don Dozo teams. Cause you can see like that's pretty much the only check for Dozo on this um, on this team. And obviously making it this deep into the tournament where Dozo is very heavily Oprah rep represented uh, means that this paid off. So yeah, uh, Leaf Storm Amoongus is also really cool. I think that might, does Amoongus learn Leaf Storm? Is that an error? Oh my god, it learns Leaf... When did that happen? When did... What? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. VGC... Or here, uh... Gen 8 OU. When did that happen? That's new... What? <laughs> Sorry, I just had my mind blown. I didn't know it got that. That's kind of cool. I guess that's really good in the Dozo teams. Like, obviously, like, you'll be able to one-shot it um, if you have enough special attack. But yeah, uh, Intimidate, Life Orb, Salamence, Terra Steel makes sense. Tailwind is, like, really nice on this guy. Um, and you can see it's the special attacking set. So despite the heavy uptick in Intimidate Pokemon, uh, this one doesn't really care about it, and it's going to be able to go for these um, stab moves with very high base power. Wide Guard Pelipper, obviously a very good call with um, stuff like Rock Slide, Make It Rain, and Earthquake running around. And Assault Vest King Gambit is always very good. Low Kick makes sense for beating opposing King Gambit. But yeah, very nice team there. Uh, and I want to look at top four, and then like we'll stop going in-depth with teams and just kind of look at like uh, trends here. So... Uh, Aaron Brook or Aaron Brock, uh, his team was like hard TR with a rain mode. So if we see it, we have Ferrigraph with safety goggles and armor tail. Obviously, um, armor tail is really good for blocking fake out, but you're still able to use like a partner fake out Pokemon, like a uh, flame orb Hariyama, uh, to make sure that you get that trick room off because Ferrigraph is extremely difficult to break. Uh, we see Focus Ash Masquerada, Flower Trick, uh, knock off U-turn protect. Assault Vest King Gambit, standard set, Brick Break over Low Kick though, which is really nice because we see a lot of uh, screens in this metagame right now. And Terra Grass Dreadnought, that's pretty standard. Yeah, this is just like a standard like Trick Room plus Rain Team. I like it a lot though. Uh, honestly, like I think that Trick Room, I'm surprised Trick Room didn't get like second place to be honest, but it makes sense. I think that if there was a, a, a good way to represent what this metagame has been, uh, it's a Don Dozo team getting second and a straight up counter Don Dozo team getting first. I think that's like a good representation of what's been going on so far. But yeah, uh, some other really exciting stuff that I noticed is uh, we see that uh, well, I already pointed out like there's a lot of Don Dozo running around, but the majority of Don Dozo are the speed boosting variant like I had mentioned. That's to improve uh, a couple of matchups there. Uh, but there is one attack boosting Don Dozo from Amelia Forbes. Um, and we do see Giovanni Costa here running. Is this going to be Terra Normal Dragonite? Yeah, Terra Normal Choice Man Dragonite. Uh, it's sort of like a, a hyper offense team. Yeah, I would call that uh, fake out plus like Choice Band Dragonite and Life Orb Golden Goat. That's like hyper offense. That's really cool. Uh, James Evans' team is really awesome. We actually see the... Oh, this... It, all right, so James had a really cool play in top eight. So, all right. Yeah, so it's Mirror Herb on the Tauros. So I had mentioned this in my previous video, how Mirror Herb Tauros is actually like a really good uh, item for it. Because what it'll let you do is go for Intimidate onto Defiant Mons, and they only get plus one where you get plus two. And also, if you switch in on like Don Dozo, you'll be able to get an Omni Boost. And with Terra Grass, you beat it. So that's really cool. Uh, but... What ended up happening was James had his Heat Wave um, Hydreigon on the field next to his uh, Tauros, and he purposely gave a Thermal Exchange Boost to the uh, to the opposing, oh, what's his name, um, Glaive Rush guy, uh, Baxcalibur, and by giving it that plus one, he ended up giving a plus one to his uh, Tauros water and then he close combated it. So now the Tauros had plus one Aqua Jet at its disposal as well as like Raging Bull and uh, close combat. So that's that's really cool. Uh, beyond that, you know, the team is just generally nice. It's really cool seeing that Hail is viable. It can make top eight at a regional like this. Uh, so yeah, I, I've always said that Hail is going to be like really decent. I don't think it's going to be top tier, but yeah, no, that's just amazing to see. Uh, we see like some more rain teams. Uh, we see some more like Golden Go. Um, oh, that's really interesting. Just like Pelipper with no like rain abuser. Or I guess uh, Taurus Water is a rain abuser in some extent. Uh, Baxcalibur placed multiple times in top 32. Uh, so that's very cool. And just other general trends. Like I think we see that this is one of the most diverse top cuts we've ever had. Um, a lot of people I want to talk about, like I want to talk about this really quick. A lot of people said that like with the advent of open team sheets, creativity would go down the toilet. And I'm like, no, that's not at all the case. Uh, it weeds out unreliable creative teams uh, as you can see like 
While there are repeats of particular teams, this is like an anti-meta team archetype that's been running around. But we see, you know, the anti-meta team, we see hyper offense Don Dozo, uh, we see a rain team, we see a hard trick room team with a rain mode, we see hyper offense Don Dozo plus like a, a choice spec Skilmora, we see hyper offense uh, Dragonite with like um, Tailwind and Tauros, uh, we see Snow, uh, that same team that got first place, another rain variant. Uh, and we also still see stuff like Annihilate that's like top cutting. I'm honestly really surprised Annihilate didn't win the whole thing. I was kind of rooting for Annihilate. There's a Metacham uh, from Bubs. Honestly, shout out Bubs. Uh, she's an amazing uh, friend and I really appreciate uh, that she finally got like a, a big top cut here. So that's that's awesome. Um, as like a master. I don't know if she actually got... I she got a few as like, um, as like a senior. I don't know if uh, she got any as master. But yeah, that's like a really nice top cut placement. Uh, and yeah, just generally speaking, th the creativity across the board was amazing with this team. We even see an Arbeliva at 30th. Like, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm like kind of speechless as to like how different all the teams are here. Uh, I really think that uh, this format is shaping up to be one of the best ones that we've ever played. And a lot of the anxiety regarding Don Dozo uh, sort of ended up being a little overplayed, you know? Uh, Don Doza, while it is like a really strong archetype, you can see it's like no stronger than anything else. Like it's it's about as represented as Bex Caliber was, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. I just wanted to get a quick video out there. It wasn't the most organized thing and I just wanted to like give my opinions on, on the results of this tournament. Uh, I'll be competing in Orlando. Uh, I didn't go to this one because I just didn't want to have to play 11 rounds in one day or 12 rounds, however many rounds it was. Uh, and also like, you know, short notice for me when I found out what it was. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.